Hi, this is Chris from Essential SQL, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn about the WHERE clause. This clause is used to filter data. It's the main way that you actually limit the number of rows that are returned from your query. So in this lesson and the next, we're going to learn about different kinds of conditions, such as equalities, range, and uh, membership conditions and then do a uh, ex comprehensive example with a select statement. And then, of course, we'll have exercises. So uh, in general, the WHERE clause is a condition that must be met in order for a row to be returned by a query. So as you can imagine, each time the database is bringing back a row, it looks and tests it against a condition. And if the condition passes, the row is included in the result. If the condition fails, the row is um, passed over and uh, maybe someday it will be selected. So don't feel bad for the row. When a condition passes, what that's called is the condition's true. So what we're in a way, a, a lot of this is based on what's called Boolean logic. So w as we progress into more comprehensive examples, we'll start talking about how you can combine these together and, and that's all done with what's called Boolean algebra. But for now just know that it's kind of a pass fail. And when we talk about pass, we're talking about the rows being true. So the general structure for our statement, and I'm gonna just kind of do a fictitious one here, would be like select and then it would be um, like the column and then like the second column and then from like a, our table, so like my table and this should all be familiar. And then the next, uh, the piece that's new would be the, the where clause. So it would be where, and it could be something like, uh, like column two equals um, a value. So the one thing I want to point out here is, is that I'm assuming column two is text, and I'm putting it in quotes. And then, of course, I'd hit the semicolon to execute it, and it's going to get mad at me because this is... Um, basically a syntax here. So let's actually look at this with a real example. And to do that, I'm going to um, grab a uh, example that I already had, um, had, and I'm gonna paste it in here. And what we're doing here is we're selecting company name and contact name from customers where the contact title is owner. Put some icon on the end of that, execute it, and you can see it comes back with um, the company name Deerfield Title, contact name Dick Terracotta, and uh, Tony Fawcett. So let me show you what this looks like if I was just to do this without the filter so you can see what that data would look like. Select, um, I think it's title I want to. Oh yeah, contact title. So you can see when I had done the where clause, it returned just the two, Dick and Tony, and it hadn't returned those where there was Barbara, Jim, and Jack who were directors, installers, and purchasers. So that's how a simple filter would work. Now sometimes you may not have confidence in your data. Uh, for instance, maybe the owner capitalization is off or is, is not spelled correctly. And in that case, a neat trick you can do is to essentially test for the uppercase version of that statement. So what that would look like would be this here, where I have the where clause and I'm saying I want the uppercase of the contact title to be owner. That way, regardless of how they spell it, if it's all lowercase or mixed caps, the upper expression will convert the field contact title to up, all uppercase. And then I'm, I'm always knowing that I'm comparing that to all caps with, to my value for the test. And if I run this, you'll see that it provides the same results. So the other thing I think that we'll point out here is, is that your conditions can contain expressions. So in this case, we can we have an expression that changes the column to uppercase. And much like you can do 
equalities, we can also do a not equals. So if I take the same query and we run it with, um, we want to find everybody that's not an owner, I can come in here and I can use what's called the not equal sign, which is basically the opposing um, greater than less than signs. I should get everybody that's not an owner. And you see I get Barbara, Jim, and Jack. So that's basically the director, the installer, and the purchaser. So that concludes our first lesson on the where clause. In the next installment, we'll start talking about the range and membership conditions. And then finally, about um, the examples. So I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.